Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Again, my name is MNLG and welcome once again for another learning experience here in my YouTube channel. And for today's vlog, we will discuss now about Typhoon. And I think you're all familiar about this. We've experienced this one every year. And for this particular lesson, we will just deal and review some of the basic concepts that help us out understand better about the concept about Typhoon. So, what are we going to learn about this particular topic? Well, by the way guys, bago pala tayo mag-proceed sa ating lesson, if you are just new here in my channel, then please do subscribe my YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button. And please do like and share na rin sa mga videos. And para din pala maging updated ka sa mga bago kong videos na in-upload dito, then please or kindly hit the notification bell para lagi ka updated sa mga bago kong post na video. Okay? Alright, so these are the following topics that we need to discuss in this particular vlog. Number one, how typhoons develop. Second, parts of a typhoon. Third, we have the eye and the eyeball of a typhoon in land, masses, and bodies of water. And last is understanding typhoon. Alright, so let's proceed now to the learning competencies. The learning competency. Explain how a typhoon develops and how it is affected by land masses and bodies of water. And these are the learning objectives. Okay, we have A. Characterize a typhoon and how it develops. B. Describe the wind speed and air pressure in the different parts of typhoon. C. We have described the effects of the eye and the eye wall of the typhoon as it passes through an area and d explain how land masses and bodies of water affect the typhoon all right let's proceed now to the definition of terms number one we have here typhoon it is a massive storms that form over areas of ocean water that are warm and tropical second a typhoon or tropical cyclone is a low pressure area spinning counterclockwise and holding rising warm air that forms over warm water so a typhoon is a large strong tropical cyclone second one we have hurricane these are tropical storms that form over the north atlantic ocean and northeast pacific next the third one cyclone are the typhoon form over the south pacific and indian ocean and we have here the last term the latent heat this the heat release when warm moist air rises and condenses into water vapor and that's it okay so those are the terms that we defined but to understand better about those terms i have here another information that would help us understand better about those concepts that i have mentioned a while ago so again cyclones are huge revolving storms caused by wind blowing around a central area of low atmospheric pressure. Wind blows anti-clockwise in the North Hemisphere and clockwise in the South Hemisphere. Typhoon is a term used when it formed in the Pacific Ocean, while hurricane is a term used when it formed in the Atlantic Ocean, while cyclone is a term used when it formed in the Southern Ocean and Indian Ocean and last but not the least we have really really it's a term used in Australia so yun um, those are the differences okay of the term when the cyclone hit in a different geographical places okay those terms that I mentioned a while ago varies only due to its geographical location all right so it's, it is clear now that the term is just associated based on the geographical location okay so let's proceed now to our day one lesson so our day one lesson focus on how typhoons develop so i'll be showing some pictures for us to be guided and to have a clearer understanding about how typhoons develop or form all right so here are the pictures that would help us understand how typhoons develop or form the first one Typhoon start off as a tropical thunderstorm. The strong winds pull in moisture from the ocean. Okay, so based on the picture, so it mentioned there about the word tropical. Okay, why it named tropical? The word tropical specifically means places near the equator. 
The word is also sometimes used in a general sense for a tropical climate and a climate that is warm, too hot, and moist year-round. This includes tropical rainforest with lush vegetation, tropical plants and animals are native to the tropics. So I hope that that is now clear to you that when I mention about tropical, it has something to do with the geographical location. That is why when you check about the map or the globe, so as you can see that the Philippines or the map, the Philippines is near in the equator. So that's why we do have this tropical climate. So I hope that those things are now clear to you. Okay, the next picture, the thunderstorms convert the moisture into heat. The heat causes more air to flow to the center of the storm, causing evaporation. Alright, class, let's do have a simple recall. So, um, evaporation is being mentioned in the second step. So, I know that you're familiar with the word evaporation because in your grade 7, so it was taught or discussed about the concept of water cycle or hydrological cycle. So, as we all know that um, that cycle or that process has evaporation, condensation, and then precipitation. So normally, it involves about um, different types of molecules or phases of matter. We have solid, liquid, and gas. But in that process, we are only dealing with, um, of course, we have liquid and, of course, gas. Now, um, in that water cycle, so the reason why we experience rain, it is because, as we all know, that there is a transformation of phases of matter from liquid into water vapor. So how? Of course, as we all know that when the sun or the heat of the sun strike on the surface of the water, of course, those molecules that is um, in there in the water molecules will be heated first. And then eventually, when that molecule is being heated, it transforms into another phase of matter, which is what we call the vapor. All right, so or the water vapor. So that vapor is, of course, considered a gas. Now, when that liquid transforms into gas, so it will become lighter. So the moment that it will be transformed into that type of phase matter, so it will go up, it will rise. Because as we all know, compared to the dense of gas and liquid, less dense, of course, gas is less dense compared to water. So it will rise and it will move up. And that is how the vaporization or evaporation takes place. And of course, when that, that gas first it moves up in the atmosphere, and then it will, um, there's what it could, um, then it will condense. Okay, it will condense, and another process will take place, and that is what called condensation. And, and of course, when there is more water into it, and then of course clouds cannot take it anymore. Of course, eventually it will fall, and then that's called precipitation or rain. And so that's why in the picture, first there's an arrow going up when you say that the water vapor goes up and it goes in the atmosphere and then of course that um, the movement of that particle is too fast. Alright, number three we have all the heat and air flow toward the eye creating the typhoon. Okay, so as you can see in the picture, maybe you're thinking, sir, why is it that there are a lot of hours there we have going up? and spinning around or just like a circular pattern this is the question now as i have mentioned a while ago that we do have this uh, water cycle processes we have evaporation and we have condensation now the moment that this um liquid molecule will be heated so it turns out that of course the molecule will change into another phase of matter which is gas and then eventually because gas lighter it will goes up Okay, it will go up and that gas is somewhat like um, you know having a warm warm temperature now and then another type of gas first condense so it has this cold um, temperature in your module you encounter this question why is the Philippines prone to typhoon and this is the answer the Philippines is prone to typhoon and other natural disaster because it lies astride the typhoon belt in the active volcanic region known as the Pacific Ring of Fire and in the geologically unstable region between the Pacific and the Eurasian tectonic plates it is a country surrounded by most air so the typhoon is able to feed on that the typhoon also needs cold air 
Once these are together, the air spins in circles. The typhoon is then formed. All the things that the typhoon needs are provided in and around the Philippines, resulting in several typhoons a year. So what will happen now if these two types of air will combine? Warm air and cold air. Of course, the air spins in circle like that. And that's the reason why typhoons are developed. Alright, so let's now proceed to the parts of typhoon. Actually, we do have three parts of a typhoon. We have eye, eye wall, and rain fan. Okay, first eye. The center of the storm. The eye is a region of mostly calm weather at the center of tropical cyclone. The next is the eye wall. It is the most dangerous and destructive part of a tropical cyclone. Here winds are strongest, rainfall is heaviest, and the deep convective clouds rise from the close to Earth's surface of a height of 15,000 meters or what do you call 49,000. 15,000 meters equivalent to 49,000 feet. The next one, rain bands. Rain bands within the tropical cyclones are curved in orientation. Tropical cyclone rain bands contain showers and thunderstorms that together within the eye wall and the eye constitute a hurricane or tropical storm. Again, please take a look on the picture showing the three main parts of the typhoon. We have eye, eye wall, and rain band. Okay, let us now proceed to the day three of our lesson. The eye and the eye wall of a typhoon in land, masses, and bodies of water. Well, in this particular topic, you only have to um, you know, notice which one has a greater effect. Typhoon in bodies of water. The typhoon gets its energy from warm ocean. So, when a typhoon stays longer in the ocean, like the Pacific Ocean, it gains more wind and water and gets stronger. These winds and water can cause damage to man-made structures like houses, buildings, bridges, railways, and electrical wirings. Or it also happens in some natural resources like big trees, rice fields, and crops that may turn into a disastrous one. While typhoon in land masses, when a typhoon reaches a landmass, wind is blocked by mountains and man-made structures. As a result, it decreases speed. In addition, there is no large supply of warm water. This causes the typhoon to become weaker during landfall. Okay, in that particular concept class, we only have to remember that a typhoon gets stronger when a typhoon is still there in the ocean. It gets stronger and stronger because of the accumulation of water and everything. But when the typhoon hits land or weather or mag landfall na ito, it gets weaker. Hihina ang speed. Okay, mababawasan ang speed ng typhoon. So again, these are the stages of a tropical typhoon respecting to its categories. First, we have tropical depression. We have speed of 35 to 64 km per hour. And then when it increases speed, so it will transform into tropical storm or TS with 65 to 118 km per hour. That's the maximum wind speed. And then, first, pag pa ang speed niyan into 190 to 200, and then it will transform into typhoon but if it reaches 200 maximum speed of uh, wind speed kilometer per hour and then that typhoon will transform into super typhoon at yan ang mas malakas also to understand um, typhoon i also included here the public storm warning signal or psws so we have um, signal one to five so and of course we have the corresponding kilometer per hour so example here if signal number one okay it only have 30 to 60 kilometer per hour and lead time hours almost 36 hours and the impact is like no damage to very light damage so in here it shows here that as the signal um, as the signal number increases of course the impact also increases so um, well, in that table class, oh, it only means that as the signal number increases, the impact also is increasing. So as the signal gets higher, of course, it possibly that it also have 
greater destruction or it has a massive impact both land and water. Okay, before I forgot, one thing that I need to emphasize here is that the, the word PAR or the Philippine Area of Responsibility. The Philippine Area of Responsibility or PAR refers to a designated area in the Northwestern Pacific where Pag-asa is tasked to monitor um, and issue warnings pertaining to tropical cyclone occurrences and activities. So to wrap it up, every year, the Philippines or our country is hit by typhoons. No part of the country is spared. All provinces have been visited by a typhoon at one time or another. In recent years, the Philippines have been overwhelmed by powerful tropical cyclones. Okay, alright, so we're done with the discussion of the lesson. Alright, to end this lesson and to check your understanding whether you have learned something or not, so these are the activities that you need to do and submit it to me. So first one, we have to plot the Philippine area of responsibilities. I'll be providing some materials for you to use and how to achieve it. And the second one is tracking typhoon. So alright, so those are the things that um, I have to discuss for this particular vlog and again thank you for listening and I'm hoping that I'm gonna see you in my next vlog. Bye everyone!